Alrighty, welcome back viewers to the highly anticipated second installment of our cruise vlog. Today, Promise is an exciting experience as we embark on a journey spanning not just one, but two memorable days aboard the impressive Norwegian breakaway sailing south towards Mexico. Join us as we explore the heart of this engaging voyage. So, let's get going. So on this episode, we will be showing you all around the beautiful Norwegian breakaway during our second day, which so happens to be an at sea day. We'll be taking you into the unseen sections of the boat not many have seen as we take a behind the scenes tour, showing you everything from where they store the massive amounts of food, the laundry area, and even a sneak peek at what's behind the stage at the theater. Afterwards, we'll be taking you back up to the top of the ship to show you a bar crawl, pool area and finally wrap up the day as we head into a ice bar so make sure you grab your jacket later in this episode join us as we disembark from the ship and soak up the sunny vibes of Cosmo Mexico Maxima doors adds yet another country to the list as we explore the vibrant streets bustling markets captivating sites and much much more during our brief stop in Mexico this episode promises a diverse array of experiences offering a little bit of everything whether you're contemplating a similar cruise or simply seeking inspiration, we aim to provide valuable insights for all of our viewers at home. So if you missed last week's episode, we showed you around our port city of New Orleans, enjoyed some awesome Southern food, the World War II Museum, and even caught a parade before ultimately boarding the Norwegian breakaway just outside of town. We steamed on down the Mississippi River before eventually ending up in the Gulf of Mexico. We also did a room tour and showed you around the Haven in part one. So if you missed it, be sure to check it out. Now let's get on to part number two. The alarm went off around 7 a.m. The boat swayed around from the waves and I headed out to the balcony to see that we are no longer in the Mississippi and totally surrounded by the Gulf of Mexico as we steamed on south towards our first port. Sally and I had our behind the scenes tour at eight. So we headed on down to the atrium and awaited the tour. Sadly, I thought I'd get a lot of great content from this tour, but they wouldn't allow video in 90% of it, so you'll just have to take my word. Video or not, we did get to see a lot of interesting things along the way. The hallways the workers walked down seemed a bit out of place, like something out of Squid Games. Our tour guide showed us where the workforce ate, basically a large buffet, and that the workers get a movie night on a weekly basis. This week, it was the new Top Gun movie. We went down and up countless sets of stairs, so it's not exactly ADA friendly. Eventually, we ended up in the food section where thousands of pounds of meat and goods are waiting to be consumed by the masses upstairs. From what I remember, bacon and chicken thighs were the most consumed on a cruise, which we thought was interesting. We were even allowed to head into the giant freezers that were twice the size of our Haven room. Afterwards, we descended down more steps and found ourselves in the laundry area. Dirty towels were stacked 10 feet into the air, almost touching the ceiling. Sheets were laying around in the thousands, and we learned that there are 26 workers that work around the clock, 13 at night and 13 during the day, constantly doing laundry, folding towels, and ironing sheets. It's an absolutely brutal job and a bit eye-opening when you consider that there are 3,500 people on this boat. Lastly, we navigated through the bows of the ship until we arrived at the backstage area of the theater and learn about the shows they perform and how they maintain their outfits. So that pretty much sums up the behind the scenes tour. I honestly would have liked to see more about the engine room or the bridge, but from what we did get to see, it does give you a better understanding on how these huge floating cities operate. After the tour, we headed back upstairs and got our breakfast once again at the Haven restaurant. And uh, the steak and potatoes ended up being my go-to on this trip. I think I had it about uh, four out of seven days. So highly recommend the steak and potato breakfast. After breakfast, we headed upstairs to catch the beginning of the pub crawl that was organized by someone that made a Facebook page for the boat, which brings up a good point before heading out on a cruise. Most, if not all of the larger boats will have their own Facebook page. And we both found it pretty useful in booking excursions, finding unique places on the boat, and even events like this one. We ventured up to one of the top decks to an area known as Spice H2O, a large outdoor venue that hosts various parties and events throughout the week and the start of the pub crawl. 
to be totally honest, I just wanted to go there to get a lay from the event, which we were ultimately successful in. But unfortunately, the next stop after for the pub crawl was in a paid area only, so it ended a bit early for us and was kind of a bust. But we'll show you a few of the other bars that we went to along the way. So switching gears real quick, uh, one of the main questions I get from friends, coworkers, etc. when I get home is, how are the swimming pools? How many pools are there? So I figured I would just take a minute in this video to explain the pool situation. So on the breakaway, there was one pool located on one of the top decks surrounded by four hot tubs. We noticed throughout the week, the pool got more and more crowded each day. And I won't lie, it did get very crowded to the point where it almost wasn't enjoyable, but we made the best of it. So secondly, there is a second large pool available only in the Haven. But our main gripe with this is for one, it's indoors and you don't get a lot of sun. And two, for whatever reason, they allow dining in the pool area, which can be a little awkward. So that was probably my main complaint of the Haven in general. Also, there are a variety of water slides, a kid's splash pad area, and a rope course all on the upper deck. So uh, if you're expecting to have a pool or hot tub all to yourself, you'll be in for a shock for sure. We ended up using the main pool just about every day along our trip and we enjoyed it for the most part. I also want to say that the staff around the pool area does an amazing job and a uh, big shout out to Andy. So yeah, we like the pool area. After a tour, a pub crawl, and some time at the pool, our day at sea was slowly coming to an end. The breakaway was nearing the Mexican coast as the sun began to fade over the horizon. We headed up to the Haven restaurant for yet another meal, and before calling in a night, we decided to head on down to the ice bar. So in case you already didn't know what an ice bar is, it's a bar made entirely of ice, and it's cold, very cold in fact. So make sure to wear shoes because we've seen some folks in sandals and they weren't necessarily faring too well. So uh, before entering, you'll be given a parka to keep you nice and toasty. And uh, if I remember right, you get around 20 minutes to spend in the bar. And honestly, after five, I was pretty much ready to bail out. But uh, Sam pulled on my ear and uh, we had about two to three drinks that were served within the ice bar. And uh, you guessed it, it was also in an ice cup. And if you're extra brave, you can sit down on the ice chair. So it was honestly a lot of fun. And if you've never been in an ice bar before, we highly recommend it out. So uh, give it a try. So after the ice bar, we caught some more live entertainment, headed over to the casino. And within a few hours, we called it a night with thoughts of Cosmo in our head. The next morning, we awoke to a nice still boat with no waves and no shaking, and we were officially in port. I went out to take a peek from the balcony and was greeted by the shores of Mexico and a beautiful sunrise. Well, good morning, January 16th, and Maxim Outdoors has checked off yet another country on the list. As you can see, we're just right off the coast of Mexico here at Cozumel. So, uh, Sam, Sally, Michael are back in the room getting ready. We'll be departing the boat here in just a few minutes. No excursions really booked today. It's just gonna be all about just hanging out in town, checking out a couple of local shops, and maybe even doing a couple shots of tequila along the way. But as you can see, quite a few other cruise ships in the port, including this Virgin cruise ship just ahead of us here. Give you a, a look out towards the Pacific and see other parts of Mexico off in the distance here. Another cruise ship off. Probably gonna be docking here in Cosmo in a couple minutes. And uh, another cruise ship, as well as more land down that way. So yeah, we'll be departing the boat here in just a few minutes. Just wanted to take you up on this top deck and show you the pretty awesome sunrise here down south in Mexico. So, all right, I'll see you off the boat. And uh, just a couple seconds. So another benefit that I haven't mentioned yet is when you're staying in the Haven, you will get priority disembarkation. 
by simply going down to your concierge and saying that you're ready. And they will basically put you on your own private elevator down to the exit of the boat. I'm pretty sure we were some of the first people off the boat in Cosmo, if not the first. And uh, once we got outside, we were greeted by a morning rain shower before venturing on down the pier. We headed on down the pier and caught our first glimpse of crystal clear blue water and the shores of Mexico just ahead. So for those who might not be too familiar with Mexico or Cosmo, Cosmo is actually an island just off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. So Cosmo is famous for its snorkeling and scuba diving. There are plenty of excursions to choose from with everything from ruins to fishing excursions but we ended up choosing just to head into the heart of the city in search of some good food and souvenirs and boy did we luck out. A little bit of information and some fun facts about Cosmo to share with you all just to paint a better picture of the island. So first off, Cosmo is also Mexico's largest Caribbean island and largest permanently inhabited island. The majority of the island lives in the town of San Miguel that we'd be heading into with a population of 75,000. The island even has a few animals that you can only find there, including the Cozumel fox, which is extremely rare, the last of which was seen in 2001, and many think to be extinct, and even an endangered species of raccoon, simply known as the Cozumel raccoon. With some information in hand, we continued down the boardwalk before ultimately arriving in San Miguel without any real game plan besides walk and enjoy some beachside scenery and architecture. Many folks will bring up safety while visiting areas in the Caribbean, and you should always be on guard and vigilant while visiting virtually anywhere. We honestly didn't feel unsafe at all while visiting Cozumel, so don't let that dissuade you. Everyone we met along the way were extremely friendly and we covered a lot of ground along the way. My one tip is to try the street food, whether it's nachos or ice cream. It's fairly priced and amazing. So uh, yeah, just don't drink the water. Also, while in Cozumel, you'll be pulled into four different directions at once by various street vendors, many of which make their wares by hand and are also fairly priced and one of a kind. So while walking down one of the side streets, we were pulled into an alley by a man selling God knows what when I asked him if he sold any giraffes. So in case you didn't know, Sam's favorite animal happens to be a giraffe and he pulled out something you'd see in your nightmares, the giraffe from hell. All kidding aside, you'll never find anything else like this in the world and on top of that, he gave us two shots of tequila and the giraffe for $20. And uh, honestly, that's Mexico summed up for you right there. <laughs> After our venture into the back alley, we continued our journey down the avenue, enjoying some monuments and sculptures along the way. We all seemed to enjoy this scuba diving one and even this interesting sunken boat with graffiti that was pretty awesome looking. The further we got away from the boat, the more immersed into the culture you seem to get, which I think is a great point for these adventures. Sometimes it's okay to get out of your comfort zone, go down that alley, or look into that store, you know, you can't always live your life in fear. So we kind of live by that motto. So yeah, that's Cozumel summed up within a few hours after another ice cream, a few more monuments, some graffiti, a pelican or two, and some more street beers. We decided to trek on back to the breakaway, admiring all the art along the way, as well as the blue water. So yeah, Cosmo was an absolutely great start to our Caribbean adventures. That's one port down and three to go. We made it back to the breakaway in one piece, along with the giraffe from hell, and we headed on back to the haven. Alrighty, well, we hope you all enjoyed part two of our latest cruise log. We did our best to showcase Cosmo in the few short hours we were able to spend in port. These cruises simply give you a nice taste of the culture and people from these regions. It's practically impossible to sum it up in a 20 minute video or even a five hour stop in a port town. But yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed our day in Mexico and next week we will be taking you to yet another new country for the channel, none other than Honduras. We'll be heading to the most dangerous port in the world, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Alrighty, see you next Friday folks.